Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here, going over 6.01, Reaction Rate. Have your notes ready. Chemical reaction systems are like demolition derbies. Alright, so a good way to think about how reactions happen are by thinking about cars and a demolition derby, which is when a bunch of cars go around the track and they purposefully try to hit each other and demolish each other. And so specifically what we're going to talk about with chemical reactions and atoms and molecules smashing into each other is reaction rate. So the rate at which the reaction happens. And let's remind ourselves, what does the word rate mean? It means how fast. So this lesson is going to talk about how fast reactions happen or the rate of reactions or reaction rates. And we're going to talk about some different things that we can do to our chemical situation in order to increase the rate of reaction. Or in other words, make our reactions happen even faster. In a demolition derby, race cars drive inside a ring and collide with each other. Some cars are going faster than others. When cars collide, they may merely bounce off one another. In another collisions, the cars may interlock and then separate. In collisions, some cars might lose parts, others might gain parts such as bumpers, like the bumper from this car might stick onto that car. And some parts might scatter around the ring. And all those are things that can happen with chemicals too. If they don't react with each other, they just bounce off each other. Sometimes they interlock with each other and then they'd separate and make a chemical reaction. Or they could do it also by losing parts, right? Like we did the double displacement reaction and the single replacement reaction where they switched partners. And this would be an example of switching partners. And some scatter around the ring like a decomposition reaction, a reaction where you have one chemical and it splits apart into many chemicals. So thinking about the cars going around is a good way to think about it. Chemical reaction systems are much like demolition derbies. Reactions move about at different speeds and run into each other such that they can react and form products. This view of chemical reactions is called collision theory and can explain many things about chemical reactions. So let's add that into our notes, collision theory. Collision theory says that atoms or molecules move into each other and then they react. So they can't react if one's over here and one's over there. They actually physically need to touch each other in order to react. So how do we get the best collisions? Okay, If we want the best collisions, do we want move our molecules moving fast or slow? So think back if you're watching an exciting demolition derby and you want the most excitement. Do you want those cars moving fast or slow? Well, like NASCAR, right? You want it moving fast. So how do we speed up molecules? There's a couple things we could do. One thing we could do is stir them, right? We could stir the molecules. That's one way. What's another way that we could speed up the molecules? We could increase the temperature because temperature, remember, is just the measurement of how fast the molecules are going. So if we increase the temperature, that means we increase the molecule speed, we increase the movement of molecules, and do 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 do, we have more collisions. So hit pause, write stuff down, and we'll go to the next one. How do we get the best collisions? If we have lots of cars or only a few cars? Well, especially since they're traveling at different speeds, you want lots of cars. So same thing with chemical collision. Increase in concentration. In other words, have more of the chemicals in the beaker. So increase concentration means more molecules, means more collisions. All right, what would give us the best collisions? If they had more room or if they were close together? Well, if they're cars and they're on the opposite side of the track, chances are they're not going to collide with each other. So, man, we want to squeeze them together. And we can do that by increasing the pressure, which we're going to assume that increasing the pressure can also decrease the volume. So we squeeze them together. So, therefore, there's also less room, more collisions. So I'm going to put increased pressure as well as decrease the volume because they go together. 
So we squeeze them together. We force them to be together. Ha, ha, ha. And then we have more collisions. All right. What's going to give us the best collisions if there is more or less surface area? So we have to assume we have the same amount. All right. So in other words, I have this much space altogether when I look at my chemicals. And we're going to say, is it better if I have it in one block? Or if I have that same amount, but I have it broken in to little pieces. All right, so which one of these has more surface area? The big block or the little blocks? The little blocks have more surface area because surface area is where you can touch around the outside. So in other words, it would be here and it would be here and then vertically, Vertically, it would be here, right? And it would be over on this side as well, okay? But when we look at our cubes, now we not only have the outside edges like we did with our original big piece and the bottom and the top, but we made extra edges. Woohoo! Right there, right there, right there, right there. Right there. So we have a lot more edges, in other words, a lot more places we can touch, so we have more surface area. And the more surface area you have, the more places that can get hit, and therefore you're going to have more collisions. All right, so let's look at some animations of this. So low surface area, so only around the outside, when it's bumped, will it react, okay? Here, you got the whole outside edge, but now we also made this edge, and this edge, and that edge. So we made some extra edges so we can have more collisions. Surface area. Solid reactants with a higher surface area allow for more collisions and result in more products. For example, if we have carbon, which is represented by the black molecules, plus oxygen, which is a diatomic, di meaning two, so there's two atoms for every one molecule, they bump into each other and they make carbon dioxide. In a sample reaction, the carbon block with more surface area allows more O2 to react with it and then it creates more carbon dioxide. So they don't show you the O2, but they show you the product. All right, so more surface area, more reactions. Let's look at another one that we did, pressure. So look and you can see that with more pressure, what they did is they decreased the volume. So that can go hand in hand. We squeeze them together, and the closer they are together, the more they're going to collide, and therefore the more they're going to react, and the more products they are going to create. In the sample reaction, carbon monoxide and O2 under high pressure create more carbon dioxide. All right. Let's look at another one. Temperature. So this one's pretty easy to see. The higher the temperature, the faster they're moving. And the faster they're moving, the more frequent the collisions of the reactants. The more they collide, the more they're going to react. And so you can see here in this one, they have one, two, three, four, five, six CO2s. And the ones that are faded in the background, you can see our O2 and carbon monoxide. And over here, you can see it's only made two molecules of CO2. And you have a lot more carbon monoxide and a lot more oxygen floating around. And they haven't bumped into each other and reacted yet because they're going slower. They're having less collisions. So higher the temperature means the molecules are moving faster, means more collisions. All right, concentration. Well, over here, we just have a couple of molecules. Well, if you only have a couple of molecules, they have a lot of room to move around and they don't collide as often. Whereas here, we put a whole bunch. We have a very high concentration, a whole bunch of carbon monoxide and oxygen gas, and so they're going to create more carbon dioxide because there's more of them to collide and, therefore, higher concentration and more of a reaction. All right, you can go ahead and work on your pre-quiz and then go ahead and take the quiz.